Hey there, Demon Slayer fans. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we have an exciting topic to discuss. We'll be diving deep into the world of Demon Slayers and exploring the secrets and powers of the legendary Hashira, the strongest Demon Slayers in history. From Water Hashira Giyu to the enigmatic Mitsuri and the prodigy Muichiro, we'll cover all 13 Hashira, including the esteemed former Hashira. So stay tuned as we delve into their ranks and even rank them at some point in the video. But before we get started, if you enjoy seeing Demon Slayer videos like this one and want to keep them coming, make sure to join the Demon Slayer family by subscribing and hitting that notification bell to turn on all notifications. Now, let's dive into the world of Hashira. First, let's turn our attention to the former Hashira, the formidable warriors who ran the show before the current generation. One of the most revered among them was Jigoro Kwajima, the former Thunder Hashira. As the master of the thunder-breathing style, he was known as the Rumble Hashira. Sadly, Jigoro retired from his role as Hashira at the age of 35 after losing his right leg in battle. His dedication to his students, Zenitsu and Kaigaku, left a lasting impact on their lives. Jigoro was a strict but caring mentor, especially to Zenitsu, who was often seen as a crybaby. Despite the challenges, Jigoro never gave up on him, believing in his potential. He relentlessly trained Zenitsu, pushing him to become a stronger and more skilled warrior. Through Jigoro's guidance, Zenitsu learned the thunder-breathing forms and developed his unique form, the Form 7 Flaming Thunder God. In his later years, Jigoro faced a heartbreaking dilemma as he sought to choose a successor for the Thunder Hashira title. He wanted both Zenitsu and Kaigaku to share the role, as together, they knew all the thunder-breathing forms. However, Kaigaku felt insulted and eventually succumbed to becoming a demon, becoming Upper Moon Six. Filled with remorse and determination, Zenitsu takes on the responsibility of avenging his beloved mentor's death. He defeats Kaigaku, proving his strength and the impact of Jigoro's teachings. Zenitsu's journey from a crybaby to one of the strongest swordsmen showcases Jigoro's exceptional guidance and nurturing. Jigoro's legacy lives on, not only through Zenitsu, but also through the many lives he saved and the powerful form of thunder-breathing that Zenitsu creates his devotion to his students and his relentless pursuit of their growth made him an unforgettable figure in the Demon Slayer universe. The former Hashira, Jigoro Kwajima, may have passed on, but his influence on the Demon Slayer core and the legacy of thunder-breathing lives on. He exemplified the true essence of a Hashira, strength, dedication, and a heart that cared deeply for his students. Next we have the enigmatic former Water Hashira, Sakanji Urakotaki, who played a crucial role in shaping Tanjiro's path as a demon slayer. His influence on the young protagonist was profound and left a lasting impression on both Tanjiro and fans of Demon Slayer. One distinctive aspect of Sakanji's character is his elemental contrast with Shinjiro. Unlike the latter, Sakanji abstains from alcohol and has a low tolerance for it. Additionally, his preference for crafting fox masks stems from his deep affection for these creatures. The reason behind wearing a mask adds an intriguing and sorrowful dimension to his character, as it was a response to demons mocking his gentle face, contributing to the air of mystery surrounding him. Sakonji's noble character is further demonstrated by his selflessness and genuine care for Tanjiro. Despite receiving money from Ubuyashiki, he does not indulge himself, but instead spends it on providing nutritious food for Tanjiro during his training. This exemplifies his dedication to nurturing and supporting his young apprentice. Comparisons between Sakonji and the legendary swordsman Miyamoto Musashi are drawn from their shared experiences of meditating in remote mountains during their later years and facing unfortunate fates with their students. Musashi's wisdom, recorded in The Book of Five Rings, is revered to this day, and Sakonji's own wisdom and teachings leave a similar impact on Tanjiro. One intriguing aspect of Sakanji's character is his decision to spare the Hand Demon, who caused the deaths of many of his apprentices, including Sabito and Makamo, during the final selection exam. While some may see this as a plot hole, it could be indicative of deeper reasons and complexities in Sakanji's character, perhaps driven by his experiences and understanding of demons. Throughout Tanjiro's training, Sakanji's prowess as a swordsman is evident and he pushes Tanjiro to his limits to ensure he is fully prepared for the dangerous world of demon slaying. Beyond a mentor, Sakanji becomes a fatherly figure to both Tanjiro and Nezuko, willing to sacrifice his life to protect them. His gentle yet powerful demeanor inspires admiration and respect, making him a beloved character among demon slayer fans. In conclusion, Sakanji Urokodaki's unwavering dedication, wisdom, and love for his students, particularly Tanjiro, 
leave a lasting impact on the story and the hearts of the audience. His character exemplifies the essence of a true mentor and stands as a pillar of support for Tanjiro's journey in the world of Demon Slayers. Next, we have Shinjiro Rengoku, the former Flame Hashira and father of the iconic Kyojuro Rengoku, will explore his tumultuous journey, uncovering the reasons behind his drastic change in demeanor and his eventual redemption. Let's dive right in. At first glance, Shinjuru Rengoku may seem like a character you love to hate. Despite being Kyojuro Rengoku's father, he comes across as abrasive and dismissive. When Kyojuro became a Hashira, Shinjuru's response was cold and indifferent, showing little interest in his son's achievements. Shinjuru's life, however, was not always this way. He was once enthusiastic, raising his children with passion and zeal. Tragically, his wife fell ill and passed away, leaving a void that contributed to his pessimistic outlook on life. He began to believe that innate talents determined a person's worth, leaving him feeling inadequate compared to those with exceptional abilities. One pivotal moment that showcases Shinjuru's resentment is when he discovers Tanjiro's Hanafuda earrings, a symbol of the sun-breathing technique. In a drunken state, he attacks Tanjiro, revealing his formidable skills as a Hashira even inebriated. This encounter leads to his revelation about the superiority of sun-breathing, fueling his inferiority complex. Yet, amidst his flaws, there were instances of heroism. He saved Iguro, who later became the serpent Hashira, and played a crucial role in helping Tanjiro defeat Muzan. Shinjuru's actions inadvertently set a chain of events in motion that contributed to the greater good. In the wake of Kyojuro's death, we witness a change in Shinjuru. He puts down the bottle and starts taking his responsibilities seriously, no longer drinking on the job. This transformation is a testament to the impact of Kyojuro's positive influence, even in death. Shinjuru eventually stands alongside fellow former Hashira, ready to protect others. Shinjuru Rengoku is a multi-dimensional character, showcasing both his dark side and moments of redemption. His journey serves as a reminder that even the most flawed individuals can find redemption and change their paths for the better. Let us appreciate the depth of his character and the impact he had on the world of Demon Slayers. Next we have the former flower Hashira, Kanai Kochu, the elder sister of the insect Hashira Shinobu. Kanai's tale is one of love, sacrifice, and revenge, making her an unforgettable character in the anime. Kanai and Shinobu lived a peaceful life with their loving parents until tragedy struck. A malevolent demon attacked, snuffing out the lives of their parents, leaving them on the brink of death. However, salvation came in the form of the strongest Hashira, Yomei Himajima, who rescued them from the clutches of death. Filled with a desire to protect others from experiencing their pain, Kanai and Shinobu vowed to become demon slayers and bring justice to those who suffered at the hands of demons. At Sanami's first Hashira meeting, Kanai was present, witnessing his anger towards Ubuyashiki for treating demon slayers as mere pawns. It was Kanai who stepped in and helped Sanami understand that Ubuyashiki valued the lives of his core members. This small act of kindness laid the foundation for a deeper connection between Kane and Sanami. Over time, Sanami started to harbor feelings for Kane, and the two developed a close bond, revealing a blossoming love story amid the chaos of their world. Kanai and her cultural sisters rescued Kano from a life of poverty and enslavement, welcoming her into the Butterfly Mansion. Because of her traumatic past, Kano struggled to make decisions on her own. In her compassionate and nurturing manner, Kanai gave Kano a special coin that she used to help her make decisions. This gesture symbolized Kanai's protective nature and her desire to see those she cared for lead fulfilling lives. Unfortunately, Kanai and Sanami's love story did not culminate in a happy ending. The powerful Upper Moon II, Doma, entered their lives, and he proved to be too formidable for Kanai to defeat. While she fought valiantly, the rising sun prevented Doma from consuming her fully but the demon still dealt her a fatal blow. Reminiscing about her, Doma acknowledged Kanai's kind and cute nature. Despite Kanai's wish for Shinobu to live a long life, Shinobu took up the mantle of revenge, seeking to bring down Doma. The battle that ensued was a masterpiece in the Demon Slayer series, showcasing Shinobu's determination and intelligence. Though not as powerful as her sister, Shinobu utilized her knowledge of poisons to develop a meticulous plan. Her unique insect breathing technique, the hundred-legged zigzag, proved to be immensely effective against Doma. Throughout her life, Shinobu consumed demon poison, building up a tolerance to it. This allowed her to deliver a lethal dose of poison to Doma through her attacks, leading to his eventual defeat. Kanai's influence lived on through Shinobu, who adopted her sister's flower-breathing technique to finish off the demon. 
With some assistance from Inosuke, Kano, and her sister's legacy, Shinobu brought an end to Doma's reign of terror. Kanai Kochu, the former flower Hashira, left an indelible mark on the Demon Slayer universe. Her love for Sanami, her kindness towards Kano, and her ultimate sacrifice made her a character cherished by fans. Shinobu's revenge arc, born out of Kanai's tragic fate, showcased the power of determination and intelligence in the face of overwhelming odds. Kanai's legacy continued to guide the Demon Slayer core long after her passing, proving that even in death, she remained a powerful force for good. Next, we have Sound Hasira Tengen, who retired after his intense battle against Upper Moon Six, Jutaro, and Daki. Despite being a flashy and skilled warrior with multiple wives, Tengen is one of the few modern Hashira who didn't awaken the Demon Slayer Mark power up. Though he played a crucial role in defeating Upper Moon Six, he suffered significant losses during the fight, losing his hand and eye. Even Serpent Hashira Iguro criticized him, questioning how he could lose his hand and eye against a mere Upper Moon, implying that others would have dealt with the demon more easily. Tanjiro, on the other hand, was the one who eventually decapitated Jutaro, with the assistance of Zenitsu, Inosuke, Nezuko, and even Tengen's wives who all played roles in the battle. In contrast, 14-year-old Miss Hashira Muichiro managed to solo a higher-ranked Upper Moon with ease after awakening his Demon Slayer mark. Nonetheless, credit must be given to Sound Hashira Tengen for his bravery and determination. Despite losing his eye and hand, he didn't make a big deal out of it. After retiring, Tengen returned alongside Shinjuro to protect Kiria and his siblings. Similar to Shinobu, Tengen relies on more than just a sword in battle. He wields dual Nichiren cleavers, and employs explosive beads that can cause harm even to upper moons when they are cut. Tengen's courage and dedication remain admirable, even beyond his retirement. Next we have Mitsuri, the love Hashira. Her unique style of love breathing is derived from flame breathing, which she learned from her mentor, Kyojuro Rengoku. There are numerous fascinating aspects to Mitsuri's character. For instance, she wears distinctive green socks gifted to her by the serpent Hashira, who is also her love interest, Iguro. In the Demon Slayer world, her hair color is considered unusual, standing out even among the colorful anime hair we often see. Her sword is whip-like, described as incredibly thin and flexible, even surpassing the speed of Tangan Uzui's sound technique, as stated by the narrator. And this is all before she awakens her Demon Slayer mark. Mitsuri's impressive speed is attributed not only to the flexibility of her katana, but also her own physical flexibility and incredible range of motion. Her katana is so unique that it can only be wielded by her, and anyone else who tries would likely get cut. Her remarkable strength is concealed by her seemingly delicate physique, earning her the nickname Eightfold Girl due to her muscle density being eight times that of an average person. Despite her hidden strength, she maintains a cute appearance, a testament to the mangaka's creative approach. In a battle against Muzan, it becomes evident that Mitsuri, while formidable, is considered one of the weaker Hashira. When fighting alongside her comrades Iguro, Giome, and Sanami, she struggles the most, relying on intuition and luck to evade Muzan's attacks. Mitsuri predicts that she will be the first to fall, and unfortunately, her prediction comes true. Iguro steps in to protect her from further harm, and in the end, they both meet their fate during the battle. Despite their tragic end, there is a silver lining as they find a happy ending in their reincarnations. The final chapter reveals a heartwarming scene where Mitsuri and Iguro are married and run a family restaurant together, making it one of the highlights of the story. Mitsuri's character is indeed a captivating blend of strength, uniqueness, and love, making her an unforgettable part of the Demon Slayer world. Next, we have Flame Goku, who actually mentored Mitsuri before Demon's Air Marks. I'd say he was one of the strongest, but unfortunately he never awakened his own Demon Slayer Mark. We can only imagine how strong he would have been if he did unlock it. As mentioned, Kyojuro became a Hashira when he defeated the demon his father couldn't finish off, and that demon went on to become a lower moon. However, Kyojuro was still strong enough to finish what his father started. Nevertheless, Kyojuro Rengoku's most impressive fight was undoubtedly against Upper Moon 3, Akaza. Keep in mind that Demon Slayer marks awakened both Giyu and the Hashira or beyond level Tanjiro. Kyojuro used the rising sun to his advantage during the fight against Akaza. From the beginning, Akaza was impressed by Kyojuro. He could tell Kyojuro was strong just by looking at him, and praised his fighting spirit and wonderful sword technique. This is significant praise coming from such a powerful demon. Kyojuro uses his strongest form, flame-breathing ninth form, purgatory, which even takes the form of a dragon, a sign of exceptional strength in the Demon Slayer world. 
After the intense battle, Akaza seems to have the upper hand, having pierced Kyojuro's guts with one arm. However, Kyojuro uses this situation to his advantage and summons what Akaza calls unbelievable power. Despite being wounded, Kyojuro manages to grab Akaza's other hand and his sword is making its way through Akaza's neck. In a desperate move, Akaza tears off his arms and flees in a panic, leaving Kyojuro to die. Although Kyojuro dies and Akaza lives, Tanjiro's point that it's Akaza's defeat and Kyojuro's victory holds true. Kyojuro's goal was to protect everyone else, and he succeeded in doing so. Considering how close Akaza was to defeat, it's likely that if Kyojuro awakened his Demon Slayer mark like the others, he could have taken Akaza down with him during the sunrise scenario. This surge of power might have been enough to hold Akaza until the sun came up and finished him off. Unfortunately, Kyojuro never awakened his mark, but what he accomplished convinces me that he would have been even stronger than Demon Slayer Mark Guyu. Even without a Demon Slayer Mark, Kyojuro was arguably more impressive against Akaza. Though the water Hashira, Tundra, was there with him, Kyojuro had the rising sun, which is crucial to note. Without a Demon Slayer Mark, he was able to hold Akaza and start cutting his neck until the upper moon tore off his own arms in a panic and ran away. It's such a shame we never saw Kyojuro with a Demon Slayer Mark, because I'm sure he would have been beyond legend. Next we have Water Hashira, Giyu Tomioka. Known for his stoic and serious demeanor, Giyu is one of the most skilled Demon Slayers in the core. Despite his reputation for not smiling and having few friends, he proves to be an honorable and dedicated warrior. During the early parts of the series, Giyu displays his exceptional skills when he intervenes to help protagonist Tanjiro Kamado and his sister Nezuko against a powerful demon. He effortlessly showcases his eleventh form, Dead Calm, where he enters a state of complete tranquility, deflecting and countering attacks with imperceptible speed. This moment solidifies Giyu's reputation as a formidable and seemingly untouchable demon slayer. However, during the intense battle with upper-ranked demon Akaza, Giyu faces his limitations. Akaza's strength and adaptability push Giyu to his breaking point. In this critical fight, Giyu undergoes a transformation, awakening his own Demon Slayer mark. He realizes the importance of struggle and how it sharpens one's skills, making him even more formidable in combat. Despite his growth, Giyu is ultimately overwhelmed by Akaza's powerful attack. He survives thanks to Tanjiro's intervention and witnesses the young Demon Slayer's incredible progress. Tanjiro manages to defeat Akaza, proving himself as a remarkable fighter. Giyu's contributions don't end there. He participates in the final battle against the primary antagonist, Muzan Kibutsuji, where his skills are put to the test once more. Alongside some of his fellow Hashiras, Giyu puts up a valiant fight against the immensely powerful demon. His blade even turns red, indicating another power-up in his abilities. After the defeat of Muzan, Giyu survives the encounter and reunites with Tanjiro, Nezuko, and their companions. Despite his reserved nature, he develops camaraderie with his fellow demon slayers, even forming a bond with Tengen Uzui and holding Tengen's baby when it's born. This shows that despite his serious demeanor, Giyu is capable of forming meaningful connections with others. In the final time skip chapter, we learn that Giyu has a descendant named Tomioka Gichi, indicating that he found a wife and continued his legacy. Giyu Tomioka's character undergoes significant development, evolving from a stern and isolated warrior into a respected and compassionate ally. His exceptional skills, dedication to his duties, and ability to form connections with others make him a memorable character in the world of Demon Slayer. Next, we have a remarkable 14-year-old prodigy, a descendant of the renowned Sukuni family known for producing powerful slayers. One of the current anime season's Hashira stars is Muichiro, who shares lineage with the legendary Yorichi, the strongest slayer, and Kokushibo, the formidable upper moon. Recently, Muichiro awakened his memories and gained a tremendous power-up, allowing him to effortlessly annihilate upper moon 5, Yoko, whose ultimate form was said to be harder to cut than diamonds. Tangent, an authority figure, acknowledged Muichiro's exceptional talents, which come as no surprise considering he is one of the very few who can single-handedly defeat an upper moon. The other such character is Zenitsu, who conquered an upper moon 6. Muichiro initially received some assistance, but everything changed when he awakened his Demon Slayer mark. After this transformation, he became self-sufficient and even managed to outclass the final form of Gyoko while being heavily poisoned. His next significant battle was against his ancestor, the strongest upper moon, Kokushibo. Muichiro demonstrated remarkable resilience when Kokushibo drew his sword and unleashed his blood demon art, 
resulting in the loss of Muchiro's hand. However, undeterred, the 14-year-old hero stopped the bleeding and immediately resumed his attack. Although he couldn't match Kokushibo's power on his own, he displayed unyielding courage and determination. Sanemi, observing the fight, explained that Muichiro's lack of experience compared to his older peers was the reason for his initial struggles. Yet, Muichiro's potential was far from exhausted. He pressed on, displaying incredible bravery and a never-give-up attitude. With his limited time due to severe injuries, he still chose to make a difference in the battle against Kokushibo, saving his comrades and ultimately contributing to the enemy's downfall. As the fight intensified, Muichiro unlocked a significant power-up known as the Transparent World, much like Gaiomi did in a previous battle. Despite losing the lower half of his body, Muichiro continued to wield his sword, which turned bright red due to his newfound strength. This unexpected surge of power limited Kokushibo's movements, enabling his allies to gain an advantage. Finally, with combined efforts, they managed to behead Kokushibo, claiming victory in the battle. Sadly, Muichiro's injuries were severe, and he passed away after the fight. However, his comrades recognized his vital role in their triumph and acknowledged his brilliance, particularly considering his young age. In the afterlife, he shared his lack of regret for risking his life to protect his friends and companions. Undoubtedly, Muichiro's potential was immense, and had he lived to his twenties like Sanami and Gyome, one can only imagine the greatness he would have achieved. Next up we have Sanami, the Wind Hashira. He's an impressive warrior who participated in the Upper Moon One fight. Interestingly, his experience and skills surpass even Muichiro, as Kokushibo himself acknowledges. Kokushibo actually hypes up Sanami, believing that among all the Hashira he's encountered in his long demon life, the contest would already be over if he faced Sanami. One remarkable trait of Sanami is his insane durability, bordering on being unkillable. He can keep his muscles flexed to prevent his guts from spilling out, a feat that Kokushibo believes a human shouldn't be capable of. Additionally, Sanemi possesses Marachi in his blood, which makes demons feel drunk, making them easier to fight. However, against top-tier demons like Kokushibo and Muzan, this ability proves less effective. What sets Sanemi apart is his wild and unconventional fighting style. He surprises everyone with tricks and maneuvers that no other Hashira would think of attempting. For instance, he blocks Kokushibo's sword with a gun and even uses his foot to hold a sword. His ingenuity and adaptability make him a formidable opponent. During the fight, Gilmore joins Sanami, and they both awaken a Demon Slayer mark, enhancing their abilities. Sanami also demonstrates excellent teamwork with Gaiom, which even Kokushibo acknowledges as crucial in such a high-speed battle. Being recognized as the strongest Hashira's training partner is undoubtedly high praise. As the fight progresses, Sanami's reflexes get faster and more accurate. He manages to hold his ground against Kokushibo, but it becomes clear that Gaiome is the stronger of the two. Nevertheless, no one expected Sanemi to be on Gaiome's level, proving that he's still an exceptional Hashira. Despite taking some injuries during the battle, Sanemi continues to fight relentlessly. Muchiro saves him once, and Sanemi, along with Gaiome, avoids a mortal blow from Kokushibo's countless crescent blade attacks. Together, they play a key role in defeating Kokushibo ultimately beheading him. Even when Kokushibo refuses to go down after losing his head, Sanami and Gyomi persistently attack him. Kokushibo is astonished by Sanami's ability to continue fighting without bleeding to death, highlighting his remarkable endurance. In the final battle against Muzan, Sanami's creativity and resourcefulness shine once again. He throws bottles at Muzan and sets him on fire with a match, demonstrating his innovative approach to combat. Throughout the intense fight, Sanami proves to be one of the hardest to kill among the Hashira, surviving multiple dangerous encounters. In the end, after all he's been through, Sanami makes amends with Nezuko, whom he treated cruelly at the beginning. He expresses remorse for his actions, showing growth as a character. In conclusion, Sanami, the Wind Hashira, is an engaging and formidable warrior with unmatched durability and a unique fighting style. His resilience and resourcefulness in battle make him a vital asset in the fight against demons. Surviving through numerous challenging encounters, he proves himself to be one of the toughest and most skillful Hashira. Next we have the serpent Hashira Iguro. This might not be immediately apparent from the anime, but fan books reveal a fascinating detail. Sanami and Iguro are actually close friends who get along really well. Therefore, it's not surprising that when Sanami displayed hostility towards Nezuko at the start, Iguro followed suit, suggesting that they should entice her with blood in a dimly lit room 
since she can't tolerate sunlight. Iguro might not strike you as a friendly guy initially, but the more you get to know him, the more you warm up to his character. It's worth noting that Iguro was rescued from a female serpent demon by Shinjiro Rengoku, a pivotal event that propelled him to become a Hashira. Despite his smaller stature and comparatively lesser physical power among the Hashira, Iguro compensates with his exceptional speed and swordsmanship skills. He's been shrouded in hype for quite a while and rarely engages in on-screen fights. He didn't hesitate to reprimand Tengen for losing a hand and an eye to defeat Upper Moon Six, even though Tengen received assistance from Tanjiro and others. This implies that Iguro believes he could have taken down Upper Moon Six single-handedly without suffering severe injuries. It's also noteworthy that the author saved Iguro's significant fights for the climax, a convention often reserved for potent characters in shonen series. Beyond his remarkable strength, his relationship with Mitsuri is equally significant. Iguro gifted her the distinctive green socks she consistently wears. Their shared meals together underscore their companionship. Although Mitsuri tends to out-eat Iguro, while they love each other deeply, both grapple with feelings of inferiority stemming from their pasts. Iguro's sense of guilt arises from his family's unholy deals with a serpent demon, which ultimately led to their demise. This burden compels him to perceive his blood as tainted. He believes that the path to redemption and worthiness for Mitsuri lies in his demise, defeating Muzan and being reborn to marry her reincarnation. As hinted in Mitsuri's section, this ending is eventually realized, a heartwarming outcome that I'm elated about. In their subsequent lives, Iguro and Mitsuri confront Upper Moon 4, Nakami. Although not exceptionally strong, Nakami's cunning presents a challenge. It's arguable that she was recruited out of necessity rather than merit, but her evasive tactics make it hard for Hashira Iguro and Mitsuri to corner her. Despite her craftiness, Iguro's prowess shines through as he supports Mitsuri during the skirmish. An intriguing detail is that while Mitsuri's attire takes a beating against Nakimi, Iguro's remains unscathed, a subtle sign of his superior skill. Eventually, with Yushiro's assistance, they overcome Nakimi without incurring substantial damage. Iguro's standout moment arrives when he faces off against the formidable demon, Muzan, in the ultimate battle. Keeping pace with fellow Hashiras, Iguro impressively contends with the opposition. Worth noting is that Iguro achieves this without unleashing his demon slayer mark power, yet he remains on par with his peers. A testament to his skill is his ability to shield not only himself, but also others, demonstrating his exceptional proficiency. As the battle unfolds, Iguro temporarily loses his sword to Muzan and questions his resolve. Stepping in, he provides the necessary support until he regains his footing. Witnessing Iguro awaken his Demon Slayer mark and imbue his blade with red energy showcases his determination. While many relied on external aid to achieve this, Iguro harnessed his internal strength, although it left him drained and nearly unconscious after tangling with Muzan. His valor is evident as he attacks Muzan even gaining access to the coveted transparent world. Tragically, despite their collective efforts, Muzan eventually incapacitates the team. Iguro's swift recovery stands out, as he rescues Tanjiro despite his impaired vision, facilitated by his serpent companion, Kaburamaru. Iguro's pursuit leads to a decisive strike on Muzan from above, culminating in the creature's demise. Even in the face of adversity, Iguro's indomitable spirit shines through. In stark contrast to his prior convictions that non-sun breathers were ineffectual, Iguro's actions underscore the impact individuals can make, regardless of their lineage. Even after enduring a point-blank attack from Muzan, Iguro persists in combat against giant baby Muzan alongside his comrades. Eventually, Muzan succumbs to the sunlight, and their collective efforts secure victory. While Iguro played a pivotal role in this accomplishment, his pursuit of excellence resulted in grievous injuries. As he nears the end, he musters the energy to console Mitsuri, both of them professing their love for one another. This poignant moment marks one of my favorites in the series. Their commitment to be united in their next life, as highlighted in Mitsuri's section, offers a gratifying conclusion. Next is the strongest Hashira, Gyome Himejima, the stone Hashira. He is a gentle giant when not kicking butt and is regularly seen crying, but don't let the tears fool you. This 27-year-old deserves his title as the strongest Hashira. He wields a unique weapon, a niche chain spiked flail and axe with such purity that even the upper moon Kokushibo can't cut through it. Kokushibo acknowledges Giyome as an especially gifted Hashira, noticeably above Sanami, a skilled Hashira in his own right. 
Kokushibu praises Gyome as an example of the perfect physical form, developed at the utmost. He thinks it's been perhaps 300 years since he set his eyes on such a great swordsman. Kokushibu straight up calls Gyome's ability to wield such a heavy weapon as an extension of his body with so much likeness and agility. Unbelievable. Gyome may even succeed in breaking Kokushibo's sword, but it's made of his flesh, so he can easily regenerate it. He does all this before even activating the Demon Slayer Mark power-up. When cooperating with Sanami, Gyome manages to take off Kokushibo's ear. Keep in mind that Kokushibo always wanted to be the strongest samurai. The fact that he got his sword broken and ear cut off is chipping away at that image of a samurai. Eventually, when he becomes all monster and casts off all pretense of being an honorable samurai, that's when he starts evaporating. But more on that in a bit. We're not there yet. We went over how Gyome saved Sanami from losing his arm when Kokushibo unleashed an unhonorable surprise attack by making his sword grow longer. Again, something that a samurai wouldn't be able to rely upon. Every type of Hashira may stray from the path of a samurai in this fight, but it's like a little victory for our side. And these little victories add up in the end. During the battle, Gyome gets a further prestigious power-up, access to the transparent world, and he strategically uses this power to his advantage. In the high-paced battle, Gyome throws a rosary ball that hits Kokushibo's hand with enough force, changing everything, as the rosary dulled his attack. At that moment, everyone was able to land meaningful attacks, especially Muichiro. Upper Moon One points out that because Gyome was able to sense the transparent world, he was able to control his own blood circulation, disturbing Kokushibo's attack. This opened up the window for everyone to gang up on Kokushibo, including Genya with his OP blood demon art. Gyome, along with Sanami, avoids taking lethal damage from another desperate surprise attack from Kokushibo, where swords sprout from all over his body. Finally, it is Gyome's giant spiked ball, which turns red after Sanemi uses his sword to add force to it, that takes off Kokushibo's head. If Kokushibo was a non-demon samurai, the fight would be more than over already. Even among most demons, it would be over. However, Kokushibo appears to be powerful enough to regrow his head, even while Gyome and Sanemi are attacking the body without rest. Now he looks nothing like a samurai, and completely like a monster. In cases where the head grows back, as we saw with Akaza, the upper moon usually needs to psychologically give up to stop regenerating. This happens when Kokushibo sees his monstrous reflection in Sanami's sword. He's shocked and says, referring to himself, What is this? It's so ugly! He asks himself if this is how a samurai looks, questioning if this is really what he wanted. After he starts to question himself, his body starts dissolving from where Muchiro stabbed him. He talks about the ugliness of not admitting defeat, even though they took off his head and of living in disgrace and becoming a monster, all because he was so scared of defeat. He says he became a miserable creature before he completely disappears. Throughout all this time, Gyome and Sanami were pressing Kokushibo to the point where Sanami had passed out and was fighting unconsciously. He had to be told by Gyome when to stop. Then Gyome is the one who reminds Son of Me once he comes to, that it's not over until they beat Muzan. So after all that, Gyome didn't faint like Sanami, and is ready to keep on fighting immediately. He does help during the final battle, even receiving fatal injuries. However, he doesn't shine as much as Iguro in the final battle, as I talked about earlier. That's probably because Gaiome shone so much during the Upper Moon 1 fight, and the mangaka needs some time to develop Iguro and give him his moment as well. We gotta be fair, Iguro fought a tricky but not that dangerous Nakame for a bit, which you can't compare to Gyome's fight against the strongest Upper Moon. So Iguro was coming into his final battle a lot fresher. Nevertheless, Gyome was great, and contributed to defeating Muzan, even continuing to fight and help stop giant baby Muzan after losing a leg. Now you may have gotten a sense of the way I'd rank the Hashira while explaining them. Let's enter the ranking portion of the video. We do know that this is an especially strong generation of Hashira, so this would make me want to put Jigoro Urokodaki and Shinjuro in the bottom tier. Yes, we have some cool feats from Shinjuro. Specifically like saving Iguro from Serpent Demon and embarrassing a demon that would go on to become a Demon Moon while drunk. But the fact remains that we haven't seen any of them take on Demon Moons on screen, so we can't make crazy cases for their power. Next we have Kanao, Shinobu, and Tengen, who didn't awaken Demon Slayer marks and didn't come off as especially strong among the current generation. Doma did say that Kanao wasn't as strong as her sister, which is one of the reasons Kanao in this tier. But I also think Shinobu should be given credit. Her goal was to make sure Doma eats her and ingests the poison within her, and she accomplished that after being pretty impressive in the fight, especially speed-wise. 
She still has value to me because even if she was physically too weak to cut off a demon's head, I think her speed and poisons made up for it to some extent. Although it took sacrifice in her life, she did play a key role in taking down Upper Moon too. Something Kane couldn't even do. Next, Mitsuri should probably be put here in her own tier. She did awaken a Demon Slayer mark and held her own for a very long time against Upper Moon 4, Hantengu's strongest form, Zoha Kuten, who wasn't toying around either. She went on to help against Nakime, and then even against Muzan, she just couldn't keep up with the other skilled Hashira against Muzan. Then we got a broader tier here in which I'd put Giyu, Rengoku, and Muichiro. Muichiro is one of the most naturally gifted Hashira, and I mean the dude soloed an upper moon at 14 years old. He could have easily made it to the top tier, but he just lacked experience, as we saw that lack of experience did come into play, as Anomi pointed out when it came to a super strong opponent like Upper Moon 1. Perhaps it's weird I'm putting a character who didn't awaken a Demon Slayer mark here, but he's the mentor of Mitsuri, and he did amazingly well one-on-one -on -one against Akaza. So I have to personally put that on Gyome here as well. I just couldn't put him any lower. Giyu, for his part, is not higher up in my view because despite awakening a Demon Slayer mark, he wasn't that impressive in the Akaza fight and completely took a back seat to Tanjiro in the Muzan fight. He dropped his sword first among the remaining highly skilled Hashira, while the others had to step in to save him and give him a pep talk. Now again, I'm not saying you can't argue that Giyu could be in the top tier. I'm sure a lot of people would like to. But for me personally, I'd put him here based on what we've seen in the biggest battles. Now the top tier Hashira goes to Sanami, Iguro, and of course Giyome. At the pinnacle for Sunday, I'm impressed by how he just doesn't die. The dude goes through so much damage, so many fights. He impresses Upper Moon 1 by being able to fight him one-on-one -on -one for a while, even when most Hashira would have been dead by that point, as Kanao points out. And the dude makes it to the end of the series in the best shape, no arm or leg missing. Iguro, like I said, then comes from a hard fight like Upper Moon 1, but he did exceptionally well in the Muzan fight, being able to keep up with the best and even shield others. Even before we see his power-ups like Demon Slayer Mark and Red Sword, and acts as a transparent world, and so on. He also gets up first after everyone faints, and as a result, helps Tanjiro the most out of any hot against Muzan. And then, of course, Gyome is an easy one. He's acknowledged in the series, and by the other Hashira as being number one, and should maybe have his own tier. As even Kanao said in black and white, he was above Sanami. He unlocks the overpowered transparent world power-up as well, and uses it to turn the tides of the Upper Moon 1 fight with a Rosary Ball. After that, he continues to help stop Muzan right up to the end, even when he only has one leg remaining. And I stress it doesn't bother me if people rank them differently. Like in the comments, for example. Just explain your reasons if you got them. It all depends on how you make your argument. So that is it for today's guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this channel. This is Newbie, signing off.